it all the time. That's the difference between Coyote Star and I is I go late. She goes early. That's true. She's already getting tired. <laughs> it's been it's been a long time. Are we already live? We're live. Oh, I'm nice. both. We're live on both. <laughs> It's like funny though, because I'm like, are people yeah? There's nobody here. No one's awake. No people will one, start coming in. One person. Maybe maybe I've been shadowed out. <laughs> no, everybody has an eclipse hangover. There no, we go. It's, oh yeah, yeah. No, see, it starts to build people. <laughs> but I'm wondering on this Instagram, I'm like, what the heck is going on? That's unusual. That is very unusual. It's telling people that you're here. Hello. <clears throat> There's not one person <laughs> on there. You know, it's fine. I guess. Wait, no, there's no way. I know. I've never in my life had it that to where not one sense. person. Yeah, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Just restart it. Oh, there we go. I love it. Hello. Wow. This is really strange. I've never... That There's something wrong. Hang on. Let me tell you. Yeah. End video. Discard yeah, see, media. on IG, I didn't get the notification. Yeah, just restart it. That is so weird. Well, anyway, we're on YouTube. That doesn't matter. Nobody got the notification of us? Mm-mm. Well, we wanted to talk about eclipse season. Here, I'll check mine. Check. Because <laughs> both of my phones are being used. <laughs> um, yeah, you're live on Instagram. I'll enter the room. I think they're not notifying me because I think I just got shadowed again. Yeah, you're... That's Because that's really I tried weird. to tag myself and... You can't find me unless you put my whole name in. So I know I'm in the bad boys club That's again. That's what happens. And wow, like, they're like not wanting yeah, people to watch my shit. We're having trouble loading this live video. Okay, so that's not working. Wow. All right. Oh, because do... the moon's on my Chiron? Maybe. It's just, maybe it's the lunar eclipse in Taurus. It says you're live, but it won't load. I've never had that happen. Maybe I need to restart the app. Discard media. I don't, it's like, how funny all these YouTubers are watching and they're like, what is he, what are they doing? The life of being a YouTube astrologer. This is what it's like. Gosh. I think you're being shadow banned. I never get your notifications. You know what? I wear that with pride. Shadow pride. I don't know if that would go down They're well. saying forget Instagram. Should we just do it on YouTube? Yeah. We can just do it on YouTube. That's my last try. I reset the app and... Oh. I think it's going to work this time. Yeah, I just don't know. We will see. Anyways. Anyway... Eclipse season. It's good to be with you, though. It is. It's been since Chiron was leaving Pisces into Aries the last time we did a video together. Yeah, and that was a weird... That was, that a, was a very <laughs> weird time. And, and we've all... We got a lot of shit for that video. We got a lot of shit for that video. So actually, the last <laughs> time that we did do a video, we got a lot of shit. People thought we had a threesome that night. We um, did. Let's set the record straight. Let's set that record straight. And we did not have a threesome. I got my I got my meal paid for and I got face painted. It was good, wholesome fun. It was. It really and was. it was very divine masculine and feminine talk. Yeah. And that was, was the funniest part. Or people thought we were doing well, not only were we doing drugs and we were having a orgy, but then we decided to paint our faces while having an orgy and on drugs, which if we were having an orgy, I think that the makeup would have been sprawled yeah, everywhere. and we wouldn't have been doing a video. <laughs> we, wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't have been doing a video like that. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, kind of funny. But yeah. anyway, long story short, it's good to have 
you around, my energy again. I always love your energy. Yeah. Everybody always tells me all the time, oh my God, I love Coyote Star. Oh my gosh. Actually, that's not true. Our last video was at 2020 at Conscious Life Expo. But that wasn't of just you and I. Right. That, that, was, that was fucking awesome. That was fucking that the was last good. big astrology talk in the world. It was. And we did all warn you. So... Eclipse time. How is it? How are you doing? Well, actually, you know what? I'll say it for us. I had a great eclipse, and you said you had a great eclipse. I how was it for you? Fucking awesome eclipse. Um, to me, it felt like climbing out of the snake pit of Scorpio season, and finally integrating the panoramic. Uh, realizations that I had mm. around all the shit that is not working in my life. And um, that Taurus moon at the North Node with the ruler Venus going into shadow in Capricorn. Weird. Venus in Capricorn has this like very self-parenting energy because yeah. we have the feminine aspect of Venus mixing with the masculine of Capricorn, which is basically saying... You know, you saw your shadows through Scorpio season. If you want to get out of them and go to that North mm. Node, you have to climb out and you have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get out. And, right. and Capricorn isn't about quick fixes. So it's like step by step, how are you going right. to create this new life of quality? And this whole retrograde through with Venus and Capricorn is going to be kind of like... With Pluto, which it's going to station on. Right, 26 degrees. Yeah. It's pretty... Um, trying Uranus in shadow. Right. Yeah. As it arrived in, yeah. And mm -hmm. with the lunar eclipse, it was trying Uranus. It is right, right now, too. Right. It, because Venus is slow right now. It's like doing right. 40 minutes a day, so... So there's like the upgrade factor of like, you can create a, li a life of quality trying something new using that Uranian mm. energy, but also... <laughs> Taking responsibility for the dark shit that's come up in the last few weeks. And it's like... How much dark shit do you think has really come out? Like a little bit or a lot? In regards to what? The collective? The collective. A lot. But if... But it's not if like... If you're asleep, you didn't see it. Yeah, it's almost like uh, being at Coachella and like a bunch of the outhouses fell. Yeah. And all the blue stuff started to come out with other things. I call them rats, you know? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 like, no, but, like, a bunch of people just went, yeah, whatever, it's just... I told you earlier, it's, it's like throwing it's like, ping pong balls at, like, a cement yeah. wall, and it's, like, a bunch of shit came out that you and I have been talking about right. for years. A long time. And it's, like, crickets. Like... It is weird, the crickets, or it's disassociation because you don't want to face it for some people, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it is a little weird and odd because so many, like, big bangers did come out. There's been some shocking Huge. stuff. And it's just kind of like... Travis Scott concert. Oh, my gosh. Ashley, Forgot about that That's one. her name, Ashley Biden? Ashley, Ashley Biden's, Biden's notebook diary. diary. Um, uh, what else? Uh... Project Veritas. Well, Project Veritas and the the whole investigation into that and taking away his own private journalistic mm -hmm. phones, all of his contacts, what to really go into all that. There was something on the main moon. Um, well, the Travis Scott concert was like a, oh, right. when the moon went right in a sag. Right. So it was right after that. But around the new moon was, um, God, it feels like two weeks has already been like a year. I know. I don't know. Um, November. Biden's infrastructure bill. Oh, that was that was what it was. The infrastructure mm -hmm. bill coming up. Oh, and then today they passed their social bill. Right. Build back better bill, but it only in the house. So. Right. I mean, the Travis Scott concert alone. If that was the only thing that happened, I mean, that was the most scorpionic dark tragic shit of all time and people literally aren't even talking about it anymore yeah it's kind of gone under the rug a lot of things are going under the rug quick they find a new distracting thing 
fast. And maybe under this last end of this north node in Gemini, it's it's the battle of Mercury squaring Jupiter right now too, coming out of this eclipse. And that's, right, Mercury and Jupiter ruled Gemini and Sag, and that's where the nodes are. So there's this kind of battle of the mind and beliefs or truth and beliefs. And people are kind of in belief systems, like entrenched in them. And then the fact that you go from that to South Node and Scorpio, when you brought up this kind of like going through these shadows and the deeper stuff mm -hmm. that we can really get out of and using this Venus and I think this Venus and Capricorn is great because it's, it's like, amazing. Yeah. it's giving us not only just like steps, but it's giving us like leverage. It's giving us something to actually hold on to. It's like a ladder out mm -hmm. of situations with integrity and that are more in alignment with our lives. But I feel that the Ooh. South Node Scorpio stuff is going to be really intense with Pluto at the end of Capricorn. Because it's, ooh. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, though, if you weren't on the side of truth when this Scorpio season hit, of course people aren't going to see it. That's a horrific realization to have to come to. So, of course, you're going to block it out. So, this Venus retrograde, if you're the one in power and control, if you're your own boss and, and you know, the authority of your life, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be pretty benign, has a lot of opportunity for transformation yeah. in enhancing your life. But if you've given your power away. Yeah, not good. Not good. Especially with Pluto. Right. That's what I'm the most interested about is the Pluto part of it. And also yeah, because you, yeah. the Venus, the past one, you know, that was in 2013 and 14. And then the one prior to that, which was eight years back, so that would have been 14, so like 2006 and seven, right? Um, it would have been that, seven to, uh, or, or five into six. Um, they were Aquarius at the edge of Aquarius to Capricorn and came into Capricorn, right? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, so it was 2006, that New Year's. I'll never forget that, Venus opposed, retrograde opposed my son, but... Uh, it's weird that this is full Capricorn, Venus retrograde, and it's with Pluto right there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you even look at the one that was prior, it didn't retrograde on Pluto to start it with, right? Mm -hmm. It was more about the end of the retrograde and stationing direct that it was, okay, Pluto's here and Pluto Uranus square and kind of stuff. But it was like not so impactful. This one's going to be impactful. Yeah. And that's what I'm the most interested in is like, what is the impact here about learning the lessons in your own life about what, and Venus is going to be in Capricorn while the nodes change into Taurus and Scorpio. So it's going to activate that Pluto so much with that totally. south node. Totally. I'm like, this is so much more than we can even really process. And for America, that the Pluto returns coming up fast. That I don't know. I, I, I feel like the shadow work in t inside is so important right now to do. So you're not giving your power away, but you're just within. It's not even about power as much as you're in your inner authority of like the best things in your life that you can be around. And I feel like you'll be like you said, it's almost like benign. Like it'll be mm -hmm. like so positive and it'll be good and be about building beautiful things in your life exactly. instead of kind of like realizing, oh gosh, I gave away my energy to that and I just wanted to be safe. Yeah, exactly. This is not a time yeah. about playing safe and the idea of what safe has been projected in the world as. Right. Like right. what's safe is what's in alignment with you that is the best for you in your own individual life that's on your long-term goals, your destiny and your feelings that really feel in alignment and that make you feel good. So whatever that is, you know, I mean, there's too many debates, I think, going on about whose is the best way of life to live when that's up to you and your own destiny. Mm-hmm. Like. Totally. What are you thinking about the. Well, and the career, like what's going to happen in jobs around the world? That's going to be a weird one. Because if you really think about Venus on Pluto with the retrograde and then the nodes changing. And these eclipses <laughs> are definitely setting us up for what this Taurus Scorpio energy is going to be about, about financial systems and money and what, how work is going to be done. Well, 
for sure. And I was going to say, like, most people that are tuning in to you at this point um, were survivalists, yeah. you know? And I think the Scorpio season, because Scorpio is about survival as well, it's ruthless, you know? And it's about adaptability and piercing to the core of an issue, not just to obsess about the darkness, but to survive and be like, like, I mean, we talk about this all the time. It's like, I'm not just truthing or like looking at these things to be negative. I'm looking at it to understand my natural world so that I can strategically make moves to survive. Yes. And I think that this Venus retrograde for the people that are aware of what's going on is another opportunity to loop it back to what you were saying with career and finances, all of which we have to be strategically paying attention because, you know, the IRS is talking about crypto fucking um, mandates well, and all yeah. this stuff. Well, and, or 80,000 IRS agents yeah, and saying, oh, it's not about, uh, you know, people who don't make a lot of money, right? Like, it's not about you guys at all, but why would you get 80,000 IRS agents? Right. Extra. Right. There's something up with that. Mm -hmm. especially with tax and South Node coming into Scorpio. And, and Scorpio rules taxes. Mm -hmm. Pluto rules taxes. Mm -hmm. And what was the whole point of the Revolutionary War was taxation without representation. And what the representation now is, are we being taxed and are things happening that are really representing the people? Mm -hmm. Like, that's a big one. Because that's really what it was. It was about the tea, right? Boston Tea Party. But even before that, it was the Boston Massacre. And so there's a lot that's going to have its own unique, weird ways of having to try and see it in the now about, like, well, what's the massacre that's been going on that's kind of been infiltrated on the people while at the same time, where have we been being used and then being taxed and then... Totally. Been take, it's been taken away from us at the same time. Mm -hmm. Energies and, and our freedoms of life, too, at the same time with all the Aquarius energy. Because we're in a Jupiter-Saturn year, which already by itself is kind of like a big off astrological year to live under. And that just seems like it's in the background. Is like the, That's like fifth down the line or sixth down the line. Does that make sense? There's so much where you're like, yeah. how are we even... Just, just last year into this year is like, you have lived as a person through the most radical transits and there's more coming up. Totally. I was going to ask you what your thoughts about, you and I haven't talked about Scorpio Taurus nodes very much yet. Oh, I love them. You do. <laughs> I think that they're, well, you know, in, in, in Vedic astrology, that's the exaltation points. And then they sometimes say that they go back to Gemini and Sag, Western Gemini Sag, the ones we're in, exalted, and then Vedic is Taurus, North Node, exalted, South Node, and Scorpio, exalted. I love Scorpio, Taurus, particularly South Node, Scorpio, because they're my favorite chart to do. Like, my clients that have South Node, Scorpio, North Node, Taurus, they're fucking warriors because they came into situations that were really fucking gnarly, really mm -hmm. dark, um, they're often, you know, survivors of abuse or survivors of ex extreme situations across the spectrum. Anything goes with South Node Scorpio, you know, it can be like the gnarliest of the gnarly, but their entire life is about overcoming that and mm -hmm. healing that and climbing out to create a life of luxury. That's the polarity of all of that darkness, you know, and they 1985 have 1985 into the first you know, four months, three months, four months of uh, 1986. Yeah. And yeah. That that was kind of an interesting time. And because if you're going to the stuff you're talking about, past life stuff, having Pluto and South Node and Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the 85, 7 Saturn there too. Pluto and Saturn, South Node, Scorpio. Woo! Totally. That's what we just lived through in 2020 was South Node, Pluto, Saturn, and Capricorn. Totally. So yeah. it's like being born under a similar energy. Yeah, and they've got the North Node in Taurus. So if they heal their shit and step into their power, yeah, they can create a life of extreme abundance, self-love, luxury. It's like, 
it's like the Midas touch. Everything is just at their, their fingertips. And that's, it's more available than the darkness if they just keep moving forward. Yes. So to bring it to the collective lens, right. we're going to have to face the dark shit, but it's all for the ones that are awake. We can be well, and to find the gifts that are right. waiting once we get through the exactly. shadow shit. Yeah. There's gifts there. Exactly. But there's also the rewards of payoff by doing the things that are really of worth in your life and holding those things opposed to living in a life of constant transformation all mm-hmm. the time, right? Like, oh, bye. Because, you know, you can live in that constant transformation, but... Taurus is also at the same time like, well, it's kind of nice having a nice, secure space that's really built and nice. Like, the forest transforms, but not that much, right? Like, you know, you can go to the Redwoods and just be like, okay, that's very North Node Taurus to me is the Redwoods. It's like, those guys just sit there, and those ladies, those trees just sit there, and they, 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 they reach the tallest because they were smart enough to, I guess, I don't know if they walked around as seeds or something, but <laughs> they, they sat... They're on the coast. They're not too high where there's no <laughs> oxygen. Because you have to remember, if, if people think the tallest trees would be up in the forest. No, like up in the, up in the mountains. No, if you're too high up in the mountains, there's no oxygen left. Mm. So they were smart trees, and they went by the ocean. They got the best view. They're so north north towards. They're like, I got ocean views. <gasps> I've got a little bit of that foresty vibe. The fog, <laughs> right? The sunshine. It's got it all. This is the best analogy I've ever heard. But that's Taurus, right? It's like, it's got to have, Yeah. it's like the window seat, right? Mm-hmm. It's the nicer mattress than the one that makes your back hurt. Like totally. It's like, that's where the world's going to have to go. And it's so weird, though, that the world could also be very attached, though, with South Node Scorpio, like it was in 85 and 86. That's when music got kind of more like more weird in the 80s right there. There was a lot more of the edginess that was kind of trying to come out that really, I don't know, some of it got a little bit too intense. Some movies tried to go darker. Some things tried to go dark. And like horror movies are not going to be the thing, you know? Like positive things, beautiful things are going to be art, you know? Things like that, like... And the human, the human spirit that's got so much beauty to it has to be found somewhere, mm-hmm. right? Like, and, and it's like setting forth the example of that in many ways, opposed to maybe, like, we have to do the shadow work, but it's not so much about, like, wearing that anymore. Like, I'm doing my shadow work. <laughs> you know how people do that now? Yeah. Well, and I think it's like, North Node Taurus is about, I might have already said this, but taking your personal power back because with South Node Scorpio, because of the manipulative aspect and the merging of energies with other people Mm. that may not have the best motives, North Node Taurus, Taurus is self-reliability. It's like, I'm going to take that back now. I'm going to take back my power and I'm going to create a life for myself. So as the collective goes through that, it that's exactly what's happening. You it know, is. we've got these dark forces that are trying to pull our energy and manipulate us into these weird timelines and weird stories. And it's like, no, I don't need you. Actually, I'm going to go do my own thing. Right, I don't right. need to go to that, ven- that venue and show you my Vax card. I'm just going to go to right. this other situation with other people and but. Right, where you're respected for yourself as being a human Mm -hmm. by what you are naturally and what is beautiful about you, not because of the fear of what you could be without even knowing that, which is an assumption. Totally. Really, it's what is an ass assuming? (laughs) So if you really think about it, oh, well, actually, Joe Biden had his ass cleaned out today and... Mm -hmm. uh, Kamala Harris became the first president of the United States as a woman by For a guy getting his ass clean. 85 minutes or something. That was the joke going around today. Oh, my God. And I felt bad for women because I was like, that's kind of a mean joke. Because, you know, it's like, <sighs> that was how it happened. Technically, you can say that. It's so funny. But you know what's so funny is, like, 
there's something going on with her. Like, is she leaving or is this like a total house of cards moment? Like where it's like, by like, it's like, maybe it is. Maybe they're trying to get rid of her, put somebody up, like Pete Buttigieg, and then out of nowhere, oh, Joe Biden's gone. Then a president that we never elected again <laughs> comes up. <laughs> Um, that would be kind of crazy, right? That would—that's House of Cards. That's how the, the show went. I mean, we've we've all had Frank Underwood's coming. Who's that? In House of Cards, the show on oh, Netflix. God. Um, we've all had a fucking weird feeling about Kamala the whole time, literally since day one. Um, so well, it's yeah. weird that she peeked in for a second. It 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 feels to me this lunar eclipse squared her Saturn in Aquarius exact. Her Saturn's at like twenty eight Aquarius. Where's where's her sun? Her or sun. Is that, where's her Saturn? Twenty eight Aquarius. But what house? I think it's in the A or no, it's in the. She's a Gemini rising, so she's in the ninth, I think. Maybe eight. I think it's the ninth. Interesting. So that was her wild car moment of like you're in and you're not. Well, and she's <laughs> also born on a full moon at twenty seven degrees exact. Aries moon. Libra Sun, so this Pluto and Venus retrograde are both going to be squaring her Moon and her Sun when they when Venus goes retrograde, Whoa. and Pluto is going to square her Sun and her Moon for the first time in her life from Capricorn. It's pretty intense. Wow! Like, and then Biden's chart does not look good at all. Trump's chart doesn't look good at all either. It's like all of the, the whole the whole last like four and a half five years of all the people that we've seen. Mm-hmm. It's like almost like they were all together. Mm-hmm. They were all casted. Mm-hmm. And we're about to watch, and they were all casted for a reason. And there's other castmates that have been not been revealed that have been casted that are all going to start making their ways up to make people accept them easier. I don't know. To me, it felt like. This whole, the whole thing with Kamala. Was that today where she came on for 80, like 80 minutes? Or yeah. It was? Yeah. It felt. They announced it in the morning today. Yeah. You know how they do it. They, it's the frog in boiling water. They, they like do, they make a move and then they take it back. And then they make another move that goes deeper and then they take it back because they don't want to ca- cause big things. I don't know. Kamala coming in for a second felt like a preview to me. To her. Right, and then they passed the bill today. Yeah. Like, out of nowhere, it was just like, yeah, you're going to have the VP be the president today. You think that would be, like, kind of announced, like, this week? <laughs> At the end of the week, Biden's getting his fucking ass cleaned out <laughs> by corn yeah, pop? It's fucking weird. That's weird. Why do we even need to know that he's getting a colonoscopy? Like, why do we need to know that? Well, I mean, I think other presidents have done that, too. I mean, why do they tell us that? I mean, would they tell us if Kamala got a pap smear? Like, I don't know. She better have weird. a pap smear card. <laughs> like, that's fucking weird. It is very weird. It's all very it's weird. The same it's thing. getting weird and weird and weirder and weirder. But I think that's the beauty of the Jupiter, Saturn, Aquarius. Because that was also... 1962, and that was JFK and NASA, and this people started seeing astronauts, and like you know, like it was just like a very weird time. But it was also the Cuban Missile Crisis that started to come about, and Cuba this year just totally is locked. People forgot about Cuba. Like a report just came out that they have like locked down. If anybody tries to protest in that country right now or anything, like they are just, like there's nobody in the streets. Like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, totally. And then the China Olympics is coming up because we missed 2020, so they did it in 2021 in Japan, but now the Winter Olympics are coming up just in months. (laughs) And there's going to be a boycotting of the American diplomatic front. Really? Yeah, that's what Biden announced. The last time that we did that was like 1980, but it was a little... They they want to erase the Hitler one, the Berlin Olympics, where... Mm -hmm. The diplomats of America were really going, should we not show up? Like, because there's going to be, there was swastikas everywhere and Nazis. And it's crazy. The whole entire crowd had their fucking Zig Heil going. Oh, my God. And then the uh, International Olympic Committee deleted the tweet of the, the pictures of the 36 Olympics. 
Wow. So it's like they don't want you to see, like... Right. And that that's kind of weird, because that, that Olympics was Uranus in the next cycle we're going to in Taurus, where it's going to come up to 18 here in retrograde. Interesting. Huh. So. Uh-oh. It's all... Totally. The Uranus and Taurus thing, I think, has been the most... With all the Capricorn transits of last year and, and stuff most felt the revolutionary war pluto and the uranus world war ii times taurus mm -hmm. energy and the and mm -hmm. the what's going on with like supply chains and what's going on with the international weird thing of alliances and who what is there people people are getting caught up i think too much in the the, the news version of it all not mm -hmm. reading around the the history and re using astrology to go, well, that's, that's right there. That's what happened last time. Doesn't that seem exactly the same? Totally. Yeah. And I mean, people born in my, around my year are getting fucking slammed right now. Uranus yeah. opposite their Pluto with Saturn square their Pluto. Yeah. I'm in my last pass of Saturn square Pluto right now. Exact eight degrees. It's yeah. That's fun. Crazy dude. Uranus opposite that shit with Saturn square. I know. It's fucking. That was me last year. Yeah. But with Jupiter yeah. and Saturn together, square. People that are born Pluto. in 86 definitely know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because 86 had that. But even like 85, though, had 85, South yeah. Node, Pluto. Mm -hmm. And they had. But even the 86, though, the, the, the 86s really have South Node, Pluto. Because mm -hmm. it came down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And so this is going to be a good time, though. Because I'm, I'm finishing my nodal return, and I have Uranus south node, Sag. And so, or 83s have Jupiter Uranus conjunct with south node, Sag. Mm hmm And it's been weird seeing the 1983 people and what they've been doing. Yeah. Like, you know. Totally. So it's like... Crazy stuff happens when your nodes return, especially when they're flipped. So for people with North Node Scorpio, South Node Taurus, this is going to be ex extreme for the 1994 and 1995 kids. Mm -hmm. This is going to be, and the 1957, people born in 1957 and 58, watch out. You're going to have to make a big U-turn. Mm -hmm. Sucks. It's it's a little Austin Powers Zeke in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make a U turn. Cause you don't want to and there's not a lot of space and you know. But then it, it's intense if it is your nodes in its returning exact position because it's going back to when you were eighteen, nineteen and you were leaving high school and the big choices that you had to make in your life. But you were in a Jupiter opposition, but you just finished your Jupiter return when you come into your nodal return. So. Totally. What's up with what? Does that throw up? <laughs> I'm just reading the comments. <laughs> so, how was your eclipse? I talked about my eclipse. I mean, mine was all work in the 10th house. Uh, and mine was my lunar return. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, literally. And you just went through all that Scorpio squaring your Leo. Yeah. It's still... So. And, and I went through it on my Scorpio. So we, on my Scorpio stellium. Yeah, and the new moon was on my Saturn. I don't know. I feel like the lunar eclipse is great because I feel like, because we didn't get a lunar eclipse in Taurus since 20, 2004, it's 17 years of kind of like gone down the mm -hmm. road. I was telling someone today, I was like, it's like an old jalopy with a big trunk on the back and just like, Cut the trunk, all that shit, and just let it fly down the road. Just like, it's like a tumbleweed down the fucking road. And all the old clothes and all the old life and all the old... That's just gone. I feel like it's just like... Boom. Totally. Cut the caboose off. Mm -hmm. So it felt like the caboose got just went... With all that karmic old like stuff that's been like kind of hoarding. That's exactly it's what like It's like the yeah. show Hoarders, you know, where they come in and they fucking are, like, cleaning up and then they look at the carpet and they're like, we just need to replace the whole carpet. It's like, 
That 7-Eleven cup from 1988 does not need to still have fluid in it. It's not even fluid anymore, and it doesn't need to be holding a bunch of pens and what else is in there, <laughs> you know? It's like, chuck it out. There's a, it, was, it felt like a lot of energy chucked out. Yeah. But not until the moon came into Taurus. I was at my lowest low in a long Same. time. We were texting. I know we were we were texting yeah. each other like. Oh, 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 eh, eh. The last couple of weeks, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I feel like I'm at the bottom of hell. But yeah, okay. The safe pit. Yeah. And then that moon came in, and it was like, just, it was it was really a relief. Yeah, it kind of felt like leaving prison into a nice garden. And they have like a pack yeah, of smokes for me. Totally. They gave me cold <laughs> cold sprite and they were just like, hey. Oh my god, amazing. That's such a good analogy. But I, I feel like it was very it was very good though, even though it was very low, it was realizing I don't need to feel low in this area anymore. Like why am I putting value into exactly lowness into yeah. these things or attachments to these things? And just allowing the... I like this Venus and Capricorn, trying to be honest. I, I like even just Venus and Capricorn because it's always got a purpose behind the value. So if it's like, does this have a purpose? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Time to make a big boy or big girl decision yeah. and just cut it out. Yeah. And that's like internally and externally. Mm-hmm. So I feel like because that's what North Node Scorpio and South Node... Uh, or North, South Node Scorpio and North Node Taurus is going to be is... Inside, what are you holding on to that you can't anymore? And what do you really want to hold on to in your life? Mm-hmm. Even though these have been very physical times, because I remember when we were friends back in the day and when we were doing astrology back in the day, when it was before Saturn came into Capricorn, that time was so, like, spir- like the whole world was just going on inside and the outside world just kind of felt like not the same anymore whereas now really? like the outside world it's like oh yeah i can just pick up this remote and I just, <laughs> it's fine whereas i don't know if people were having their crazy dark nights of the soul then but like that 2012 through 2017 was nuts uh, those were like the golden years for me <laughs> I had a great time. Well, no, I mean, I did, I did yeah. too, but they were, they no, were so, they were, in, they were spiritually, they were psychedelic. They were, they, wild. yeah, it was a wild spiritual yeah. internal world, and and the external world was. Yeah. That was, was when it? everybody was traveling. Remember, like everybody was always like around the world, going, "I'm in Bali," like whatever, and like just going to festivals and it was like this very like it was well that trip. was the jupiter pluto of 2007 that conjuncted and then the yeah. end of that that will never come back no that was that was a different time i know people don't like me when i say that but jupiter and pluto and sag that is the biggest door opening of travel and every door that you want yeah. open in the world and capricorn is now closed and very you have to have a a printout or you better have a purpose or you better be part of the government or you better, yeah. right? You have to have all these like ducks in a row and then it's not the same. Like you go to a resort now and it's like, please put on your your diaper. Talking to Joe Biden. <laughs> um, we don't want you shitting all over our lobby. But that's kind of how the way that they do the mask thing. It's kind of like, please wear your diaper because you're shitting out of your mouth. Think about that. <laughs> That's how it is. So, and and so it's like you don't get it fully with Pluto and Jupiter's at fall, right? So yeah. in Capricorn. And that's a 13-year cycle. So you look at the 13 years of 2007 to 2020, guess what? The most travel, the most wide open mm-hmm. doors. You can go anywhere. You could do mm-hmm. anything. Anything was possible. Anything yeah. was open. Like, you could just be like, I'm going to make a business on LegalZoom today on my phone. Yeah. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And then it makes people kind of look back and regret of, like, in Capricorn, like, man, I regret I didn't do that while I had the opportunity. Because when you're in Capricorn, you're kind of set with what you experienced and what you learned and what you open. what doors did you open. Mm-hmm. And that maybe is the answer to why it kind of feels like there's a lot of people who haven't woken up and it's like, can we wake them up? I think there's, I believe in possibilities, but again, I'm also a South Node and Sag, so maybe I should probably shut my mouth. Yeah. With my North Node and Gemini, I'm like, uh. A lot of people sit and watch the TV and 
the news all day and then and they get programmed and that programming is too hard to decondition sometimes and neptune squaring the nodes this year was the riddler in batman like ah and, and sucking the booty's brains i think if anything's gonna wake people up it's gonna be the pluto return yeah, something's in about... Amer I, I'm, like, imagining, you know, when you look yeah. on a map of America, it looking like it's dipping, like, into the ocean on both sides <laughs> and, like, breaking in the middle and then coming back together and... Whoa! Yeah, dude, I mean... Something's gonna happen. You can't say that it won't. Or yeah. it'll just pass. It's like, no, it's a Pluto return. Yeah. Well, and I, I've said this on my channel. I don't know if I've ever said it to and you. And Jupiter, Neptune, squared Mars in the chart, too. Right. Um, back in, like, I mean, for the last decade, basically, but around 2013 to 14 to 15, when I was in the festival circuit and I was going to all these conscious music festivals, everyone started to have these visions of opening a healing center. Like, everybody. Right. It was like, everybody I talked to would be like, oh, my dream is to open a healing center, or I want to <laughs> open a spirit. And I was like, like, everybody's opening fucking healing centers, like, why are there going to be so many of them? Like, there's going to be too many healing centers. Where are all these people, these sick people, going to come from? And now... Now it's starting to make sense. Now I'm like, oh! Like, millions of people are going to need to detox this shit. Right. And so now it's making sense. Right. And so... But then a lot of those centers closed, though, and didn't want to deal with it. A lot of them are opening, though. A lot of yeah. them, not in America, but in in Costa Rica, in Mexico. Like, like this is pe places where people, like, if they get cancer and they want right. to go to a detox That's true. clinic, right? They're yeah. going to go there. But it was like, why so many? Like, wh ha like how many sick people are there going to be on the fucking planet that everyone who is making money is wanting to go and open a healing center, you know? And it's my opinion, but... I think that they were tapping in because this all started around 2012 when that crazy right. portal opened and it was like everybody was getting this download that we needed like thousands of healing centers outside of the United States. It's right. a trip, you know? So I don't know. I well, that Maybe was, that's me being optimistic. That was, that but, was when the nodes were switching in 2012 as well. Mm -hmm. December 21st, they were leaving South Node in Gemini, North Node in... Sag and right. going into North Node Scorpio, and then Saturn went into Scorpio, right? In October sixth, and then, so now we're seeing the Saturn square to all the where that Saturn went mm -hmm. in twenty twelve into twenty thirteen. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy when you look at Saturn's seven year cycle, right? And how it it looks at what were you doing at that time so intensely? So you're picking up on where Saturn's going to be even next year, twenty twenty two. Totally. Of squaring where Saturn was in Scorpio and another fixed sign of where all those healing centers and people that were doing the work and going deep into that scorpionic real world like deep like I'm not surface I'm more this mm -hmm. is what I'm feeling inside mm -hmm. that's the payoff though of North Node and Taurus is this is where if you've held the line you get yeah. paid off for those exactly. that have not been holding the line you don't get shit mm -hmm. you know because if you sit and wait long enough on something like a, a garden, right? And let the rain come and tend, tend the plants and love them. You get fruit. You get, that's what Taurus represents is the things that you really invest your energy in and you, you tend and you take care of, you get things back from it. Mm -hmm. But if you're constantly never tending to anything, then it's like with your astrology, right? Or anybody who doesn't, you, like you just continue with it and mm -hmm. it just keeps... Feeding yeah. your life and bringing you good things in life, you know? Totally. And so I think that people have to really look at where are you putting your energy and feeding it. Totally. It's feeding, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was kind of my eclipse realization. Mm. Um, with, again, I was saying I was really feeling the Venus and Capricorn energies of if I am trying to attract certain things into my life. I had this sudden realization uh, that really grounded of like, if I want a certain type of life, I need to act like the type of person mm -hmm. that would have that life. Yeah. Right? It was very Capricorn. It was like, oh, you want that? Well, what are you doing? Show me that you want that through right. your actions. 
You want to be a healthy person? Well, then act like a healthy person. You want great friendships? Well, then be a good friend. And yeah. those people are going to find you. Um, you know, you want a lot of money? We'll get to work. You know, <laughs> like, fucking right. what are you doing? You know, and it was like, oh, fuck, right. It Just like you're saying, it was like I had spent Scorpio season in this, like, emotional, in the emotional trenches, basically. And then the eclipse came through, and it was like, okay, enough. <laughs> like, now now go to work and, and fix it right. or whatever. And Build really, it. And really, if you think about it, having the sun and Mars in the same sign of Scorpio is rare because yeah. it's not like you see sun, Mars, and Scorpio and then both oppose Uranus within two weeks' time, mm -hmm. right? Like usually, And those are the defining elements of our life, the sun and Mars, right? Because they define sun, Leo defines soul, and Mars, the identity center, right? So it's like there's the identity and the soul plunging into the depths and then having this opposition to Uranus of this other... Yeah. way of your life going in a yeah. much better direction and being the farthest away yes. from it being like oh my god i have to turn this way and that way and, and then it's a little confusing but mm -hmm. it's like at the same time like uranus is not as confusing when you understand that putting the pieces together and in taurus you have to kind of sit for, on it for a little bit to, mm -hmm. to see how they're coming together mm -hmm. it's not as rapid quick and fast yeah like aries is like go yeah. go and totally. Taurus is like, I need to feel, I need to almost feel a certain way fully until I am going to do something. Right. And that's why the lunar eclipse in Taurus can feel better for people because it's like you felt the world that's possible for you. Really, totally. that's what we're kind of subconsciously feeling because the moon's subconscious. Like it's yeah. subconsciously feeling that, okay, I know the direction to take my life now. I'm going to feel better. Yeah, like you're honest, trying Venus was like, just like you're saying, that lightning bolt of, like, there's this other timeline available that's mm -hmm. not that shadow world. Yeah. But you have to work for it, you know? Yeah, and it's also advancement. I have Venus trying Uranus in my chart, so it's like, mm. oh, okay, the new phone's out, my life's on the phone. I mean, I get it. Right. The new this is out in life that can make me feel better in my, my conscious space and myself, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to at least try it. You totally, that totally is your medicine. You know, I hear your voice in my head sometimes when I'm like buying electronics. I hear your voice like, get the good one. <laughs> get the good one. <laughs> like, I know, are I you trying so, to create so a life of abundance or not? And I'm like, I remember I, I, I let you borrow my laptop and I was like, I'm sorry. This is like my only one I have that I can really loan. because I mean, he's like, yeah, you can keep it. <laughs> But it's like, I remember, I was like, I felt so bad because I'm like, this isn't the best laptop. <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's fucking true. It's like, like uh, you know. It's like, so true, you know. I'm like, every, everybody else has my other ones right now. I don't know. What, I, uh, but it's that's very me just trying to be honest. It's always like advancing forward into better things. Or if you're in a pro partnership, it's like having to change course of how to make it better in the partnership. Or going to a place to where, okay, the things need to really go into a different place, right? right? So it's like, that's the Venus trying Uranus energy. I like it. I was born with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know. But <laughs> in, in Earth, those signs, it's different. I have it in fire, so I don't know. Maybe mine's different. Mine's a little bit more edgy and exciting. Ah! But... It still got that though. It it, 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 it it makes you feel good with a little bit more youth, right? Uranus is that youthful energy, ready to refresh by getting out of kind of being decrepit and old energy. Uranus mm -hmm. is about breaking free of that kind of inner space where you're too afraid to move forward and try something different and more exciting in life. And so that's what this moment really has been. It's been a really great, beautiful eclipse energy. And I think the solar eclipse too that's coming in Sag is so powerful with the South Node because it's all the belief systems, that, especially in the collective but individually, that really are no longer serving the environment of your life or the, the truth in which that you are trying to walk down in, in this path we're talking about. It's just going to just be like, yep, no, but it's going to open up a whole new door. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Sag so much is, is it's so giving when you are willing to give yourself an honest look at 
where are better possibilities in my life instead of holding on to what I hope is going to be a possibility? Like, hope is when you have re reached a place where the possibility is possible and you are hopeful now because you finally found the door, opposed mm -hmm. to this idea of hoping for a door to open that you know because you're clinging onto a belief system that you don't know really if it will and it's not showing signs that it will. So, that's a lot. But these, like I said, these are the last eclipses that we exactly had of 2002 at the end. Same dates. Mm -hmm. So, that's, that's kind of, you know. What were you doing? You were, you were finishing high school. When? 2002, November 19th. I was a sophomore. Um, I was going through a hard time. <laughs> Yeah, I just graduated. Yeah. I joined the Navy seven days after my birthday and was going to boot camp December 10th. And I remember being, it was like real, like, yeah. oh, shit. Because yeah. you, you, you just don't go right to boot camp. I had to wait five months. And I remember, like, oh, I'm like, oh, they're talking about war and, and weird stuff like that. I guess I'm going to go to boot camp. And I remember it became real. I was like, yeah. oh, no, I got to go. Because it's like one of those things, I like, guess five months down the road, I'm having a blast. And then. Yeah, I had friends whose brothers went. I remember that. It was crazy. That was, that was when, I won't say the word on here, but the thing that said, the, the word that said mo more than any other word in the last year and a half, with a C, and the commercials about it are the same way the military during that time were pumping Navy and Army and Marine commercials in 2002. I remember because I was a senior. And it was Metallica and doo -doo 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 -doo, Navy, go Navy. And that's what signed me up. Like, I was like, I want to be Top Gun, you know? Wow. But that just replayed but on MTV and then everything. And if you notice how they're using the same rhetoric with go get the fucking. Yeah. And the way that they're putting those commercials in different forms of what people like. So on Lifetime, they're doing it like, be a good mom and do that to your kid. It's your choice. You're their mom. Or if it's like on the radio and you listen to hip hop, it's like, yo, don't you want to go to the club? Go go do the right thing. Go shoot yourself up. God, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've been in media my whole life, so I'm watching how they do this, and people yeah. are not seeing the other sides. I'll watch all sides and see mm -hmm. how they're aiming at people. And it's like the same way they aimed at people like me out of high school to join the military with Metallica and like the, this kind of way to do the music and the way, the way that they made the, the, this stuff with North Node and Gemini and South Node and Sag, they, they, were, they were painting worlds for people without them painting it themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. here, here's your arm, but we're putting our arm with the art fucking, you know, like the pen or the brush. And here, move it like this. That's North Node and Gemini, South Node and Sag, when people let and give away their minds and their beliefs to it that that's what they do is they move it for you and you, you you're uh, and i had to go through that at 19 to actually wake up and go through the hell that i went through to the north south known in scorpio with my mars and saturn down there that wow. i'm like holy and ended up in jail really yeah because i got kicked out of the military and got put into prison oh yeah So it went from ultra high, and I was the leader in boot camp, and I was so excited to go and all this shit. Till we, I'm in boot camp, and they're like, bleep, bleep. this is now war boot camp. <laughs> Donald Rumsfeld is going to come on the television. And Donald Rumsfeld came on, and after Colin Powell went to the UN, and there's Donald Rumsfeld, the Secretary of Defense, fucking saying, we are going to Iraq. You remember the moment this happened. In wow. boot camp. And they changed to war boot camp to where, like, three times a week at another, boop, boop, boop. Like, you have 20 minutes to go find the bomb on base. Right? So it's like, they straight up just go into fucking craziness, you know, battle stations out of nowhere. Wow. And it was, like, more than normal. Like, they usually do that maybe once. Where we're doing it three times a week. 
or it was like, you know, okay, in weapons training, you're doing it longer. You know what I mean? Or, you know, like that kind of stuff was like over enhanced and it was more intense and heavy energy. It was not because there was also a fear base of South Node and Scorpio. Mm -hmm. I'm in boot camp, like. Yeah. Like going, oh. Your parents must have been worried. Oh, yeah, my mom was not happy. Yeah. My dad sent me a picture of him on a Harley with a fucking cigar and said, hope you're having fun out there. I'm having the time of my life. No, he did. Yes, he Are did. You yes, he did. It's so Aquarius. I was like, fuck you in a good way. You know, I remember I, I got yeah. to get that one call a week and I was like, fuck you, man. <laughs> my girl and my girlfriend dumped me in boot camp, too. It's so funny because right there, actually, all my old pictures because I'm finding stuff from my dad, and I found the letter that I got in boot camp from her with the picture, like, we're going to have the most amazing babies. And then a week later was the letter of, this isn't going to work. I need to, I want to live my life. I don't want to be in the military with you. I was like, oh. Sounds solid. That was some... <laughs> no, and I understood, I understand, though. She was 17, I was 18, so... Oh wow! You can't you can't hold yeah. anybody back. Yeah, I didn't realize you were that young. Right, like. Wow. Yeah. I don't. I don't. She was. She was. She was, she was actually like one of the best girlfriends I've ever had. So, she was cool. How could you hold somebody back though? It's like that's my choice. I joined the military. Like, she For should sure. be able to figure out whatever life she wants, outside of that, and feel like she has to go through the military. For sure. But I think that this eclipse season can be really good if you really pay attention to the shadow stuff and pay attention to the Capricorn stuff. Like, where are you going? Yeah. And are you going because it was <coughs> based off a belief system that's been kind of, because Neptune's been squaring so much of all the Gemini Sag stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, are you, are you going because the media told you to go? Or because you're sensitive and you want to go to where you feel safety is the belief of safety. That's actually the irony that there is no belief in safety. Like safety is in survival Scorpio. Like you know how to survive, like because you have warning signs, like it feels wrong. Are you listening to your warning signs? I'm laughing because that video you showed me. Which one? Of that person who was against oh god spirituality yeah. and stuff <laughs> because like oh yeah like uh, the first thing i told you like uh, that's a warning sign and you were like laughing it's like it's like some people are listening to the warning signs like they don't want to feel fear yeah but sometimes it's not to feel fear your body has an when you're with somebody that's just a creep ball mm -hmm. and you have that feeling that's get out of the room yeah exactly that's not like bad to go through spiritually like that you were built by god to have a warning system right well it's like that live i just did recently where i was talking about spiritual bypassing particularly in the spiritual community where it's like we're talking about really intense shit and there's a large portion of the spiritual community has been the most disappointing aspect of it or a portion of it where it's like you know don't talk about that it's negative or you're going into a fear mm. place or you know, you're fear mongering or right. trying to lead people down a dark road. I got that one recently on my truther account. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm trying to lead people away from the danger right. by showing them the, the fucking criminals. Like, it's like, who's going to make a bitter, bigger difference? If there's a bunch of people living in a village and there's a fire... Who's going to make a bigger difference? The person that drops down and starts meditating and thinks good thoughts or the person that starts banging on doors saying a fucking fire is coming. Get the fuck out of your house. And because it's the same eclipses as 2002, these are the same people who literally said, no, yeah. this is what's going to keep us safe. We're going to go. We're going to get rid of Saddam Hussein. And we're going to, what? And he, he has weapons of mass destruction. And everybody went with it. And it was mission accomplished. Yeah, right. We just got out of that whole thing like a mess this year. Mm -hmm. And nothing went right. And all the money and all the people that lost their lives and on, on both fronts, our own soldiers in America and all the, the it, I think it's like a million people that were civilians and all the, and, and 
Afghanistan. Imagine the lo- how much atrocity on all those fronts. And people that are buying this whole fucking same eclipses, same fucking shit right now are like, no, I'm going to do this. You're just like following Colin Powell into the UN, who ironically just passed away. Hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Under the same eclipse cycle, he came up again and had all the presidents there, but Trump wasn't there. Hmm. So it's like really weird. Like there's a lot of stuff people are not putting together in that place. I think that the spiritual spiritual bypassing is the best thing that you could ever bring up because it's like spirituality is all colors, all inclusive in everything that is of the universe. There is no bypassing any part of it. So when you turn, it's like, I'm going to turn off these switches inside and run this ultra high spiritual life. That's why I love J.P. Spears even yeah. more so in the last year and a half. Yeah. Because like he was always really good at kind of making fun of that spiritual bypassing. Yeah. Because really what he was showing was how some of the people in the spiritual community turn off all these things and try and become like this ultra spiritual. That's what he did, right? It was ultra spiritual person, right? Yep. Like the ultra spiritual person. Mm-hmm. And like. Don't go through any of the real shit. Don't go through any of it and just bypass. It's just like, it's so Aquarius. I'm like thinking of just like knobs, like just like running a plane and being like, I don't want to know if the altitude's too high. I don't want to know if (laughs) there's low fuel. I don't want to know if the oxygen's almost out. I don't want to have to go through that. (laughs) Yes. Oh my God. Oh, let's fly the plane now. Totally. Yeah. And then it's like airplane and it's like, get the fucking autopilot on. It's a fucking blow up doll. (laughs) Totally. Like what? Yeah. And it's, it's like getting on the phone with someone when you're going through something shitty. Like, you know, when I called you recently and you were going through it and it's like, that would be like me just being like, oh, bye. You know, it's like, no. Like, oh, that energy's so low. I I don't want to deal with it. No, if you can't sit either with another person through their darkness or their shadow when they have those moments or with a situation, then that's a, that's such a weakness of character. I know. It's like you can't hold your energy field and show up, then like you got some work to do because shit gets real. I mean, look you know? at this last year and a half and for people who might not be in the spiritual community or whatever, but like how if somebody's sick, you're, as a family member, you can't go in to exactly. give them that love yeah. and give them that because that's what pulls people out of sickness is the support and the love. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're not spiritual bypassing, you're accepting it. In shamanism, you don't go to the doctor alone. You bring a best friend. They tell the shaman, tell you, like, if you're going to go see the medicine doctor, you're going to go see a doctor, like, you bring your best friend that's going to be there and hear what's being said and be mm-hmm. another point point. be like, I don't know, what do you feel about it? Did, did that doctor say the right thing or... Da, 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 because in our society, it's like, I don't want to tell anybody I've got this. I don't want to tell you. Instead of getting massive support, shamanism in Africa teaches you that the tribe supports each other, even through the worst exactly. shit. That you, you, everybody can find a problem. If somebody's having a problem right now with something, guess what? There's eight people in the tribe that might be like, oh my God, I ha- I, 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 I'm going to go run out and find that right now for you. Exactly. You need, you need like yeah. pairs right now in your life. Yeah. You got, oh, you know what? Four of us are going on a pair journey. Right. Shadow was a community experience because there was that connection to consciousness where if one of our men or women is in the shadow, then like we're all connected. Yeah. Everybody can feel it. Yeah. And it's called out by the shaman and like, let's just bring it up now and get it out. Right. And instead of being embarrassed, because that's the part, right? It's like, it's almost like spiritual bypassing also has like this kind of like absurdity of like this higher than mighty, mm-hmm. right? Like conscious state mm-hmm. of like, gosh, they're just, they're just going through the worst of the world and blah, blah, blah. And as astrologers, we show up to readings, whether it's in your shit or your best times. And we gauge and let you know, like, Hey, I it's easy for us to re- relate and understand mm-hmm. and to see within you and be like, hey, 
we're with you through this. Exactly. Or, you know what? This is a great time. But do remember, like, this has been a really great moment here. Mm -hmm. And savor it. Mm -hmm. But remember what's coming at the same time. So you don't, when you do start slipping a little bit, that you're not going to fall on your face because you're at least knowing this is this is a little bit of the, the lower part of the valley after you've been at the top of the hill for a while. Right. Totally. Like, in, in, in an astrologer, it's not about floating people into just this... This is just to make you feel good only, like, in a kind of, like, fake cake batter way. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. And I, I think you bring it up the best, the collective. Right now, the collective's... How is it bringing up anything in all of us going... Th you can't even have conversations. There's no debates. There's no public debates about this. And you can't... And, and, and right now, people that are speaking questions to find truth are dangerous now that's when you know that's that's a problem <laughs> and then the, exactly. the, there is no public debates about it you know and then the people get mad at joe rogan for having these talks and bringing people on yeah and it's like and then they try to say oh well you know if you heard it from joe rogan or you heard it from alex jones or you heard it from it's like at least they're asking questions mm -hmm. i don't hear the media asking any questions they're just reading off a prompter and so, what, like, what, like, what, what is that? Like, you just want, that's, again, that spiritual bypassing is by, by believing just what the media says only. Mm-hmm. You know, like. Totally. I, it's a weird world, but it's, it's a beautiful time. And I think that these eclipses are restorative energy. Because if you really think about Saturn and Capricorn from December 21st to 2017, Finally, of course, came into Aquarius in 2020, but then we had to come back into Capricorn again, and then finally came into Aquarius. Really, this 2021 has been it. Mm -hmm. And if you really think that Saturn in Aquarius is us going through more Saturn energy longer than normal, when it goes through Capricorn Aquarius, it's seven years. It's a double whammy of Saturn energy. And we're halfway through and a little over half now. And it's like, this is usually where we get the break from Saturn, but we're not. Mm-hmm. And so I just think it's one of those times for people to remember that this is a restorative energy, this Taurus lunar eclipse. And even the Sag, I think the Sag is so needed, especially if it can wash away these kind of like conditioned beliefs and open up to so many new potential areas and new open minds and new, because that's the best part about Sag is being open-minded. Yeah, and reconnecting to divinity, you know? I mean, yeah. Sag is the evolution out of the dark night of Scorpio. And then I always say Sag is like where we come out of the dark night and then we try to make sense of what just happened through yeah. God. So it's like reconnecting with your practice or, you know, um, while Venus is retrograde in Capricorn, a lot of my clients are revising their careers and it's like, great time to invest in a course or start to, you know, do a mentorship or something where you're learning the skills that you need to implement in the Capricorn season and, and when Venus, you know. Yeah, and thing. it could also be finding people more in the same alignment as you right. and where you're going for your life. Based or it could even be old people that have always been in there coming back together, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, like, how funny, we're in a Venus shadow and we haven't done anything for a long I time. I know. It's like, it's like, people and situations because people can put too much on mercury retrograde like it's always bad to do everything in mercury retrograde it's like well that's not true yeah and same thing with venus retrograde it's like well you got to be aware but it's like understanding it's usually if it's brand 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 new you know mm -hmm. what i mean like and that's i think with all retrogrades of the mercury mars and venus it's always like this thing came out of nowhere i don't know anything about it at all maybe I'll take it on, but I'm not going to have expectations. Especially Capricorn has an expectation sometimes. And sometimes people can overexpect during this time in relationships or money or especially with things to make them feel better. And that's what the Venus retrograde is going to show is even people who have expectations right now, but always makes them feel good. Maybe it won't. Maybe it's going to reveal with Pluto there that that expectation isn't really not a path that's going to make you feel good anymore. It has to be dropped. Mm -hmm. So totally, I'd pay more attention to like brand, brand new, like, you know, like, what is this? Or I've never invested my money here before into this before, but I, 
You know, it's like, you got to think. You got to really kind of go, hmm, maybe this is where I investigate. Maybe this is where I play around with it. Like, Venus is like Play-Doh when it retrogrades. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I mean, would you, following your, your track, if you were thinking of investing something, for example, financially, during a Venus retrograde, would you spend the retrograde period investigating and then when she goes direct, make the investment? I think I would... Um, I would... I would put my toes in the pool and I would, I would, I would not assume, well, it's warm. So it's, I'm going to, my whole body's going to feel warm. I'd be like, let me take, it's Capricorn. Let me take another step in now and put the whole foot in. How does that feel? Mm. Uh, and then I'd be like, okay, well, let me look at the long-term Capricorn effects of this. If it goes the opposite way that I feel now, what's it going to be like when I get out of the pool and have to dry off and it's cold? I was a swimmer my whole life in water polo. So like <laughs> that, that's an analogy of like, I'm always remembering you and I'm Jupiter like, and Capricorn. So it's like, like Vince Bond for a second. Oh, did I? Yeah. But like, going on a tangent. Like, but like, I put it in, I take it out. I put it in. <laughs> in. <laughs> Okay. Well, but because if you think about the longer term, right? It's like I watch people my whole life being a swimmer, right? Like be like, oh my god, it feels so good, da, da, da. and then I'm like looking over and like they kept their towel way over the other direction, like way across the pool, or they didn't bring a towel <laughs> or whatever. And as a Jupiter Capricorn, right? I'm just like already like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm laughing, Jupiter, by this by humor that you didn't plan and realize. You're going to get out of that jacuzzi and it's 45 degrees. It's going to be fucking cold. <laughs> and what? You've planned on using my towel? <laughs> and we're not even hooking up or you're, I don't even know who you are. Like, not that I'm not here willing to share my towel, but I'm going to make sure that I use my towel first and then you can get it, especially if it's not that close. That's business. <laughs> that's hilarious. And that's, that's, this, that's where with Venus retrograde and Capricorn, it's like, the last one that we just had, like, it was weird relationship-wise for me because, like, it was, like, through friends I knew and a DJ girl, and it was cool, but it was, like, I knew I was in a Venus retrograde, so I was just coming into my toes with it. We never became, like, official, but at the same time, like, it was about, are we on the same track? How funny, DJ track. We played different styles of tracks, and she called me a glam DJ because we played vocals, and that was when Tech House came really in. Hmm. And because I had played vocals, I was a glam DJ. And then I was in, and she was in the birder community, and I didn't wear birder clothes, so I was being talked shit on. And it was like one of those things where I looked ahead and went, is this going to really go anywhere if I'm already the outcast because they think I'm glam and they see me on TV and they think I'm too Hollywood <laughs> when they don't even, or they're not willing to look at who I am? Hmm. And what I represent of integrity. Like, they're not looking at my integrity. They're right. looking at what my outer recognition is, not my inner integrity. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful part of Venus retrograde and Capricorn. If I could teach anybody, it is remember to look at people's inner integrity and not their outer shell as much. Mm. Because like people can look at only what's looking good on the outside, like the trophies or something, instead of like... Does this person even have integrity of like wanting to engage with me and who I am and what my value is as a person? And that integrity internally can sometimes be more of an honorable trait than winning a race. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Totally. So, any last words? Feels good to me. It's your birthday soon, so. It is. Happy pre-solar returns. Thank you. You're getting it before the eclipse, but it's kind of close. Feels like a good one. Yeah, I mean, for you, especially your chart. Yeah. Especially, oh yeah. This one's going to try in your rising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one's going to try in my Venus, so I'm like, okay. Venus nice. is being attacked everywhere else. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thanks. But 
Well, I love always uh, being on any thing astrology with you, and yeah, it's been you. quite the journey. This was impromptu, but really fun. It was, and um, <laughs> life is a trip. Mm, indeed. I want to be back in January. We should do another one. Yeah. All right, everyone. You know where to find Coyote Star Astrology on YouTube and on our Instagram and on our Facebook. And do you have anything else? TikTok or? No. What's your website? Is it Coyote Star Astrology? CoyoteStarAstrology.com. Yeah. Um, did you link me on Instagram already? I haven't. After the word, oh, that okay. video, it does that on right. cell phone. Earth to Coyote on Instagram and Coyote Star Astrology on YouTube. Adios, everyone. Night, guys.